We're good? Yeah. How's the sound? Quite nice? Is this okay? It sounds wonderful. Okay. <laughs> the, the irony there is you don't know. Uh, well, I guess it does have a measurable effect the on me. do I ever know. No, we never know anything. Knowledge is bullshit. Um, my keys are going to fall through my pants and it's going to be really weird. It's going to cause a respondent response. Um, so I'm going to put them away. Anyway, so that's probably part of the video. That's starting the engine. No. What's that? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Things really get me going, let me tell you. Um, if you haven't figured it out, folks, this little segment vignette thing for Behavior Beast is uh, respondent conditioning and, you know, beasts and respondents and uh, reflexes. Uh, anyway, so we're really, <laughs> I'm really glad Ivan Pavlov is dead, right? Only because he did amazing work and I'm going to boil an entire career into whoop, five minutes. Um, and in fact, I'm going to talk for about another minute here before I really get into it. And that's probably going to mean that we're going to boil him down into four minutes, which is really going to torque him off. Either that or I'm going to talk really fast. I don't know. Um, anyway, so let's look at respondent behavior. Okay, It's one of the behaviors that we have to work with in behavior analysis. It's one of those basic concepts of all behavior. Um, it fits for you know a vast majority of organisms respond this way or have respondent behavior. Uh, have display respondent behavior. That's better. You don't have it. Um, anyway, so it's really simple. Reflexes. Yeah. Oh, hoo -hoo. that one felt good. Um, so the yeah, feeling, that's the reflex, right? We could modify, but modify. We could modify things. So we could take a stimulus and pair it with hitting myself on the head and that pairing that, that, that other stimulus might evoke the response. Um, so we'll get into what that is here in a second. But really modification of reflexes is what respondent conditioning is all about. So respondent behavior then is the behaviors that you engage in that are um, modified through respondent conditioning, right? So it's also called classical conditioning um, because it's classic. It's like the first one because of Ivan Pavlov, because it was like a hundred and some odd years ago. So in case you're watching this in 2045, maybe, or 2145, because YouTube is still around then, there would be a couple hundred years ago, so early 1900s. Um, so really early, very, like whoop, right at the beginning. Maybe even a little bit before, but right now, you know, yeah, well, whatever. Ah, too many thoughts. Ah, they're going crazy. All right, so respondent behavior. What do we got? We have an unconditioned stimulus. Then we have an unconditioned response. All right? So the US and the UR are your typical reflexes. That's just whatever you didn't have to learn about, right? So some pepper in the nose, shrink knees, right? I'm jumping in the water and everything's shrinking. Um, that is this really cold water. That would be a respondent, a US and a UR. Uh, but anyway, um, so we're gonna modify those. Well, how are we gonna modify them? Really simple. We're gonna take a neutral stimulus, something that you didn't have any prior history about. I didn't kill the tree, it was gonna fall off in a little bit anyway. So this neutral stimulus right, could be paired with whatever would make me sneeze. Right? So I could do this and then the C, so this becomes the CS, right? So, um, so this neutral stimulus starts out as neutral because it doesn't evoke, or elicit, sorry, not evoke, it doesn't elicit a response, right? Um, so it's neutral until I pair it with an unconditional stimulus. When I pair that with an unconditional stimulus, right, then it be this becomes a conditioned stimulus. So then if, th if we do that enough, if we pair those things enough, this CS will elicit a, um, a U, uh, sorry, not a UR, a CR, right? So the CS elicits a CR, the US elicits a UR, right? This, um, the UR does not always look like the CR. They're often the same. I might, if I pair this with pepper in my nose a hundred times or whatever, it, this may make me sneeze and they do look the same, but it doesn't have to. There's lots of examples about where it doesn't have to. We don't have time to get into those right now. Um, so CS, right, this becomes the CS through repeated pairings um, with a US and it eventually will elicit a new, uh, a new response called the CR, the condition response. We can, so that develops your, uh, your responding to the world from a reflexive sense. So people that think reflexes are frozen and fixed in time, they're not. They, they, they can be modified. And we have lots and lots of evidence for that. And Watson kind of blew this whole world up um, and went re really crazy with it. So I, the last point that I really want to make about this is that there's extinction. We can break that connection between, um, the, con uh, between the CS and the US simply by presenting this CS by itself over and over and over and over and over and over over again, right? So without the U.S. Again, there's a lot more to it. Look up the Riscorla Wagner model or wait until we record on the Riscorla Wagner mo model to talk about it. That's really about predictability between those things. So I've gone way, way, way over time. 
Uh, but I think we've got everything through. Oh, sorry, that breaking that connection, that's called a respondent extinction. We're going to extinguish the effect that this leaf has on my behavior by breaking the pairing between this and the unconditional stimulus. So last little point, unconditional, unconditioned, completely interchangeable, it's a translation issue. So uh, higher order conditioning, this is weird. Okay, so we take that, I'm gonna, I gotta get another leaf because I threw one away. <laughs> a lot of them fell. All right, so uh, we remember we had our leaf, right? Um, so that was our CS. Now we could find a different, oh, let's find a stick. Oh, oh my God. Leg day in the gym, I'm sore. Um, so this CS, right, we've developed it. We didn't extinguish it. Let's erase that part of the video where we didn't, where we've extinguished this already. So or erase it from your mind. R mind. <laughs> That's funny. No, it's not. It's not funny at all. Anyway, so CS. It already produces a CR. Now we're going to take another neutral stimulus and pair it with this, right? So we're going to pair those two things together and then whew, magically, this will eventually produce a new CR, okay? Um, that's called higher order conditioning because this was never connected to the original stimulus that produced the original reflex, the US. So in this case, the secondary CS never got paired with the original US. So as a result, okay, it's higher order conditioning. The layers that you can go through, we'll let you figure out how many you can do, but it's not very many. So, and it changes from species to species. This is a really weird area to work in. Um, the evidence is interesting and confusing. So anyway, that's higher order conditioning for you. Bye, see you.